All right, so yesterday we talked so about these videos on that. Um, we got a couple more you can watch. All right, next I want to talk about secondary ways. The secondary ways are the second facets. Are coming together somehow. They're interacting, and it's when that force over the friction, you get the release of the block perpendicular to the earthquake. So. One of the things I want you to do for me, very quickly here, before we begin in a gallon, is I want you to envision a, a small puddle or a small pond where you throw a lot in your pond. In the and then you notice, I want you to draw for me what you so see. kind of models for you here. Draw it in your notes. Heat wave, if you watch that point, what does it look like when you drop a small pebble into a pond? You see ripples just like that. Draw it in your notes. <coughs> so you can see in the primary wave how that blue dot moves back and forth. On the secondary wave, you see the waves do move in that direction, but what does the secondary wave do? It's going to bring your own brain. That's how it works. So that's the big thing about the secondary. Then the surface waves. These are very localized waves. They're not really going to travel all the way across the world. So you guys, the only ones that are going to are primary and secondary. Yeah, it's a bunch of surface waves. Surface waves are by far the most destructive waves out there. We would call that, and that's because not only are you now being pushed in the same direction as the wave back and forth, in, up, and down, but surface waves move concentric, basically means that you have these circles side to side that are basically like this. It looks like a dartboard, and that's so why you can to try to switch circles. Being a building, and simultaneously getting put back and forth, up and down, and side to side. <coughs> Chances are you're not going to last. Okay, and when we look at a lot of the buildings that were built in California, especially during the gold rush in the early 1900s, it's a lot of brick. And if one thing we've learned about brick over the years, it's not very forgiving. It doesn't bend easy. It doesn't take stress easy. And so when we get earthquakes, we typically get a lot of destruction in major cities because of their stone construction. When we look at some of the major cities, All right, so again, when we have these circles that are layered, Tyler is going to have extremely crowded population, so of course you're going to have a lot of death. Well, the houses don't have a well, strong well, building code. The pebble in the pond, it's a perfect analogy to allow for what happens when you have an earthquake and metal shaft cross on a hill. And what it does is it sends very loose soil. When you get an from the epicenter, way, and there goes the entire town. Actually, rather from the focus, and you're going to lose a lot of people. All the way through the entire globe, which is actually kind of cool to think about. So yeah, it's because even though we're over 4,000 miles away, one more thing I do need you guys to know, there's an earthquake in the middle of Asia. We can detect it here in the United You'll see this diagram if you look inside your textbook. These seismic waves travel through the interior of the Earth. We have spread earthquake all the way throughout the entire globe. Yes. They draw in our yes. <coughs> outer and inner core. Yeah, everybody yes. We lose enough energy to have to be protected. So, one of the things that I want you guys to really learn when we think about earthquakes is there's two terms a lot of people uh, very often confuse. And the first one is focus, and then the second one is an epicenter. One of the things I want you guys to notice is that the focus of an earthquake come out. You know what happened here within the mantle? Focus is underneath. Did it go okay. straight down? Focus is where it is within so what the happened? earth itself. It gets bent. That's because the waves change speed. They are trying direction. to define the focus when they travel through new material. It is location. Alright, what I want you guys to do is find that diagram in the book. So you guys got your laptops, find the diagram in your book. In this diagram, you'll notice that you have all these lines that are coming down from the epicenter. So the focus is and then so you think about when it's going to the layer, the Earth as a ball, it's literally it reared out inside the ball as the earthquake occurs. That's the focus. 
changes its direction again. Shallow focus, which means they're repulsed through the Now, circuit. remember when we talked about the fact that we think that their inner core is solid, 20% iron, 20% nickel, and we think the outer core is liquid? As far as I know, we asked the, how do we know that? Well, this is how we know that. That concept of what the interior of the Earth was was completely non-existent in our minds until the late 60s. In fact, the concept of seismology was accidental, as usual. Okay. Yeah, that means that a three-foot because we didn't set up seismometers to measure earthquakes, we set them up to see who was testing the atomic weapons. Yeah. One of the first stages of developing atomic weapons is underground explosions. So they dug a hole and see the last Yeah. And then, well, and by doing that, that releases seismic waves. And therefore, we set all these monitors throughout the world to see. Who is sitting letting off the inside of the uh, No, it's literally the particles moving the the process of the process. So, Alright, so that was the focus. The other thing we need to talk about is the epicenter. I had a turbine here. Well, the percentages are correct. We don't know. The epicenter. Yes, based on the way that the waves move, the speed. And if you were to take this point right here, the, that they are the focus, focus direction, so really draw lines lines straight up from core, a liquid to the focus, the outer core to a solid its location core. on the that surface. One is it's also really important from this diagram, as you guys will notice, is on the surface. Now, one of the waves does not enter the core. Which wave is on the core? The Well, we would say then, if you had flow, so we would say so a lot of times the peak wave, wave is off the coast of the you guys remember that? P wave is primary, focus is an S wave, and it's right secondary. With the depth of S waves, you do not, you know, so many miles or something. That's the focus then. Yes. So you make sure know the difference. So S waves will not enter the core. They just simply don't have the strength. Now, when these to make it start moving core, out, we have a collection that we call seismic waves. P waves are probably there are three types of seismic waves. Now, primary, secondary, kind of these surface. Did you want to ask yourself, how do they go? Where did that earthquake? What is primary versus secondary? Is there quite so? No. I'll literally the ocean. You're like, okay. Primary is first. Secondary means second. So how do we know that? Why do you suppose the primary waves are called first? Well, that's why we're going to do a quick little lab with you guys. We're going to use a little bit of math. Actually, all three of these happen simultaneously. However, so we're going to do a little bit of a lab to help you understand how we actually use uh, seismometers to then determine. Where the earthquake occurred. So it's been a kind they're of all leaving at the same time. So uh, let's go ahead and get you guys into your group. Nope. Come on, guys. Let's have three people leaving at the same time. One person shows up first. Why? It's going faster. It's going faster. Yeah, there we go. So your primary waves are your fastest waves. And they move in the same direction as the wind. So I need a volunteer. AJ. AJ and I have our little slinky up here. If you can think of this earthquake happening at me and traveling to AJ, we see that primary waves move in the same direction. What you'll see is this package of slinky links. You'll see it actually bounce toward AJ and then come back to me. You can actually do this. 
So you see how that goes back and forth. Okay? So what happens is on the surface, and you think about why these buildings that are in earthquake zones, ladies, tend to be destroyed fairly easily because they're actually being pulled in three different directions all at the same time. The primary wave literally shakes it back and forth. Okay, so move that land back and forth. So that's one of the first things I want you guys to notice. The other thing with secondary is you can stop that, please. AJ. Secondary, on the other hand, goes up and down. It goes perpendicular to the wave. Okay. So try to imagine this in a building. Here we sit in Garrett High School. Imagine us next year at the new high school. Okay, AJ, click up. And we have an earthquake. First thing that's going to happen with the building is it's going to move back and forth. And then while it's moving back and forth, it then gets shoved up and down. So you're on this constant roller coaster where the whole building is basically rocking back and forth while it's moving back and forth. Okay, so it's a really, really destructive force on the surface. That's right. Yeah. Um, that's actually a very simple thing to do. A lot of these buildings now in um, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, they're actually put on these gigantic springs. And so uh, this is kind of a weird thing. You know, 30, 40 story building is sitting up on a series of springs. And when the earthquake hits, building is almost able to just sway with the wave on the springs and have very minimal damage because of that. Because basically what's happening is instead of the structure taking in all that, um, all the force from that, the springs absorb that energy and allow the building to sway. Which in fact, when we think about skyscrapers, it's important the skyscraper is able to flow with the wind. So if you've ever been on inside a very tall building, you'll feel, especially if you're by the window and watch, you actually see the building shift with the wind. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> 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 